Welcome to uh, First and Ten here. Uh, I'm host Taylor Chitwood, so I have my co-host Brandon Roberts, and joined, uh, as always, Coach Rob Grandy. Coach, um, to start out, a little bit of an interesting week now. You know, you prepare, you prepare, and then all of a sudden you have to wait another week. How, you know, talk me through that. Yeah, I mean, it's a process we tell our players. I mean, you can control what you can control, and you know, nobody's been able to control a hurricane or Mother Nature. And, <laughs> You know, it's unfortunate that, you know, we've got to adjust our schedule, but it's, you know, part of life and things you got to do. So we'll drive on and get to Greensboro next week. Definitely. So, Coach, um, we just played against Apprentice. Uh, yep. We ended up winning that game 30-31-20, to 31, 20, excuse me. Um, good little game, you know, first quarter. Y'all went back and forth a lot, you know. they score, We scored first, you scored, uh, then they scored, we scored, then they scored, you know, back and forth. So... How did y'all manage to slow Apprentice's offense down after that first quarter? They really taking care of what we needed to do. A lot of what happened early in the game were, were our mistakes, and they capitalized on them, obviously. That's what good teams have to do. But uh, Coach Dawson and the defense were able to shore some things up and um, you know, were able to uh, kind of slow them down, as you said, and, and stop that pinball machine type of a score, which I don't <laughs> like. And uh, I like it on our end. I don't like <laughs> it going <laughs> the other way. Yeah. Uh, but that's, you know, we knew they were going to be a much improved team, and uh, Coach Davis has done a good job there this year. And you know, they're very athletic and excited to play their home opener. And, you know, we knew we were going to get their best punch early, and they certainly threw it at us. So I was glad our team was able to respond and uh, you know, pull ahead a little bit at halftime. And, did enough there by the end of the game when they called it to be ahead and, and get the win. No doubt. Coach, uh, next week we uh, go to Greensboro. They're coming here. They're coming here. Yep. Excuse me. They're coming here. Uh, you may be I'm going bad. to Greensboro. I might be going I'm to Greensboro. <laughs> that's right. I'll let you know how it is. All right. <laughs> but um, going through as Apprentice opened up with Greensboro at Greensboro yep. at the beginning of the year. So what's, you know, how much are we going to use of, of that film, of that game from, you know, Anything from that game? What What's the game plan with that moving forward? Well, obviously, we, we trade tape and we're able to see each other's first two opponents. Uh, so they, they've gotten our Emory game in Newport, and we've gotten their Newport, and then they played Gallaudet University week two. And, um, you know, you take from that, you know, their personnel, you try to match certain formations, certain defensive looks that may, you know, match up with you to see how they attack those things. So, uh, you know, film's an important part of the process, but, you know, really, us getting better at Farum football is our focus, and I, I don't think we've played our best football in the two weeks. And um, you know, fortunate to be one and one. Certainly, would love to be two and zero, oh, but you are where you're at. And uh, you know, our, our theme going into next week is get some normalcy, get a good schedule going, and go into that uh, that game against Greensboro with uh, with everybody healthy and playing better football. You know, up and down. I think we'll be able to handle you know the things that we need to do. And coach, you just mentioned you know about getting better and everything. So. We look back at week one, you know, when we played Emory and Henry and the quarterback situation, you know, we were kind of swapping back and forth, seeing what was going on. Um, I think Zach went 12 for 31 that game. Mm -hmm. And then we go to last week against Apprentice, and Zach's your main guy. He comes out, and he goes 16 for 25 that game, yep. which is a big increase in percentage right yep. there. What was he able to do in practice that week? What were y'all as a coaching staff in practice that week able to do to – come out and make him play better that week than he was in previous weeks and to control uh, to, excuse me to be able to um, have that going down the line sure well I think you know coach Summers our offensive coordinator and, and coach Shaw the quarterback coach do a great job of, of putting Zach in a position to ex accent his strengths and uh, he's um, you know, not a lot to do with uh, you know a, a different game plan, but certainly executed better against Newport News. We missed a couple you know chunk plays in both games, and we really haven't been able to stretch the field and, and make some big dynamic plays. But they're they're there to be made. We just hadn't made them. Um, you know, but you know Zach was very efficient with the ball. We were eight for twelve on third downs, and uh, that's that's a huge part of keeping the chains moving. When you only punt one time, you know you're doing something right. Um, you know, on offense, and um, you know, Zach's been a, a steady player for us now into week week two of his second full year playing. So, Coach, um, we've pulled out another uh, formation. Uh, a lot of people call it the Wildcat. I like to call it the Panther, uh, since you know we're down here at Parham. Yeah. Um, how much you know down the road are are, are we expected to see from that with uh, 
both white and man in the backfield, either, can, the snap can go to either one of them. Well, you know, it's really a single wing formation, which uh, we were kidding around with Brian being from Giles and Austin <laughs> Pennington and Ryan Beidelman, and uh, we got Ben Reynolds as a freshman lineman, uh, Jordan Patty from up at Stanton River. Uh, they run the single wing, and um, you know we, we've run the ball pretty well in the last two years, and uh, certainly that's a formation and an offensive set that accents the running game. And um, you know, Coach uh, Summers went up to Giles, met with Coach Williams, the head coach there, and uh, said, "Just scratch around, see if you can find some things that we can bring to our offense that uh, you know, put some wrinkles in." I think anytime you do things a little out of the ordinary, it gains your team's attention as long as it's not just a, um, a fad and it's sustainable over the course of the year and not just something that you know, you're watching Monday Night Football and you throw in because you think it's cool. <laughs> um, there's a lot of value to what we can do out of that single wing with some dynamic players like Johnny and Brian. Now, one more question. Now, be honest with me. How well can Brian throw the ball? We, we know he can run it. We how well he can, can he throw it. it? Can he throw that 80-yard bomb if we have to? No. no we, <laughs> we don't got anybody that can throw an 80-yard bomb. His passer, his passer efficiency Saturday wasn't very good. He's 0 for 1 with a pick. But, uh, you know, we went fourth down and did a little pass play, play action off of it. And, you know, it's fourth down. I'd rather him throw it to the end zone when it's fourth down than to eat it and, um, you know, try to make a play there. And the kid... You got an interception. He did complete the pass. He did, but uh, <laughs> Brian can throw the ball, and um, you know, like I said, I think it just gives another element to our, our team and our offense, and scored on a down play that we run out of. Brian scored on the first quarter. Uh, I think our second touchdown was out of that, that set. So. so, Coach, you know, we mentioned earlier about this weather. It's going crazy, you know, and this week, no one knows what to do, you know. Everybody's a little scrambled around, so how do you, how do you – how do you maintain control with your team, with your coaching staff and everything like this through this week and make sure everybody's minds are still ready to go? You're still in football season, you know, you're right. still dialed in, making sure you get your workouts in, making sure you get your practice times in with this week coming up. Well, it's not easy, you know, and a lot of those decisions are outside of our athletic department and our, our program, and we like to control what we can control. And unfortunately, a lot of these things take it out of my control and our athletics and into the administration and the bigger picture. And, you know, you got to deal with that and you got to work within it. Um, you know, really, my, my thing is to make sure everybody's safe in a time like this. It's, you know, it's uncertainty whenever we can see the path of the storm, but once it hits landfall, you really don't know where it's going to go. And, um, you know, you got to just make adult decisions the the safety of everybody involved is the key issue and football will be here once this passes and we got to reload and um, you know get going so my my key thing is to make sure our, our players are safe uh, going into this weekend and uh, coming out of the weekend get them refocused Monday and get a good work weekend before we face uh, Greensboro next Saturday and uh, that's that's our job to be had so uh, but I think our, our team will respond and and have a great week next week, energized to, to play a, a game next weekend. Now, is this Avert game going to be made up, or, or could it be made up? You know, what's the deal with, sure. with us losing this weekend? Yeah, we don't have a common open date, so that's not an option. Some teams fortunately had that situation. I think w &L and Maryville are playing next Saturday because that was a common open date, you know, uniquely the week after they were playing. But um, What are the chances? Yeah, two <laughs> years ago there was a, a Week 12 game between actually Averett and Methodist when Hurricane Matthew came through Fayetteville and um, you know, really did some destruction there and, and stalled their season for a couple weeks. And uh, they were able to play a Week 12 game uh, to make that up. And, you know, that, that is an option. Certainly the playoffs implicate that. And um, if, if either team is in that situation, which we're both vying for here throughout the next, you know, seven weeks, then it's not going to be an option. Uh, obviously, the playoff piece will take precedent. But if neither of us are in that situation, that's an opportunity that we can appeal the NC2A as a 10th a game opportunity against Averitt there, uh, third week of November. So uh, we want to play the game, you know, mm -hmm. bar none. Uh, so do they. And, that's uh, a fun one. Yeah, and we're going to do whatever we can to get it in. Um, and it just wasn't going to happen this week, or uh, and that's nothing we could control. Not everybody's control. Yep. So. Can only do so much. Exactly. So, you know, as big a game as the Averett game is, as to Ferrum um, with the rivalry, you know, just kind of like the Emory and Henry, um, you know, I, I, we're in the ODAC now, we're not in the USA South. It doesn't have, you know, too many implications as it did as the years past. 
But um, you know, what's it like to be try to get the team back in that mindset, even though it is not a t- a conference game? Right. Well, I, did. I don't approach. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't approach conference and non-conference. I approach week to week. You know, I think you've got you're really ten one-game seasons, and yeah. uh, mm-hmm. that's if you treat it that way. Then each week's a new week. Whether you win or lose, you got to get ready the next week, whether it's conference or non-conference. You know, but the big picture, it does play a difference. I mean, you know, your conference games have greater implications at the end of it when you stack them all up than your non-conference uh, from that standpoint. Um, but it, it's a great regional game, close proximity schools, recruit against each other, you know, uh, familiarity, and, and I like those juice games myself. And, um, and the conference brings that about, you know, but the non-conference piece like the Emory game was for years between us uh, has just been taken to another level with the conference, and Averitt will still be that way as an uh, original USA South school that we've played since they started football, and it's, it's like I said, been a goal of Coach Naff, their athletic director, Coach uh, Adams and me, to, to make sure that's on the forefront of our non-conference schedule. And as long as we're both coaching, we plan on playing that game. You got to remember, like, nowadays you got a lot of seniors this year that are used to playing those conference games against Averitt, and, mm-hmm. you know, they're good schools and or they're a good team and everything like that. So they got a lot of, you know, hard feelings yeah. with each other. So, you know, they love to play that game. And it much. means a little bit more. It just does, <laughs> whether we like it or not. Yeah, that's why we play the game. So. <laughs> well, uh, I think that'll do it for us here in this episode of uh, First and Ten. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Taylor Chitwood, co-host Brandon Roberts, and Coach Rob Grandy. And uh, be safe out there, guys. We'll see you next week. We'll be here. <laughs>